when I first started freelancing, my first few months, I landed a whale, and they paid me crazy amount of money. Talk to me nice. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandy Morgan and we talk about all things freelance, working remote, personal branding, business, and of course, creating life that you want. If you wanna be part of this freelance family, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like, or if you don't, give it a thumbs down to let me know how you're feeling about it. I have not done a vlog style video in I do not know honestly how long. My office has changed a little bit for everybody who has been here before. Josh is now in that corner and I am in this corner. Today's video, I'm actually gonna be going to you, kind of bringing you guys throughout my day and how I've become a Jill of all trades, which means I can do a lot of different things and how you yourself can do the same and actually make more money freelancing. Hold on though, there's Scooby. <laughs> You may already know this if you've known me for a while, but if you don't know me very well or if you've never been on my page or my Instagram or anything, you may not know that my background actually started as a software developer. And actually before that, I was in marketing. So I'm from marketing to software development to freelancing and now to owning my own digital agency. So that is really the progression of my career and I've used bits and pieces of all of that to make more money as a freelancer and an agency owner. And the biggest thing nowadays for anybody who's trying to get into freelance and you only offer one thing, which is totally fine, become really, really good at it. But if you are wanting to become more versatile and actually maybe build a digital agency, I would recommend learning every facet of what it is that you do. Meaning, if you start off in web development, which is where I started, and that's where I was like, oh, that's where I can freelance, building websites, all that good stuff. Once you build somebody a website, they're gonna need marketing. They're gonna need social media because they're trying to get their business to take off. So what I did is I learned those things. I did all the courses I could find. I found the big time influencers that were creating content and I just absorbed it all. I actually have a link, an affiliate link to Udemy if you're wanting to check that out. They have a ton of content on there. But really it's just gaining knowledge in those areas and then testing that knowledge on my own stuff. So I actually built a brand on Instagram because I wanted to start offering Instagram services to people because I enjoyed it. I loved seeing the connection, the community side of these social platforms and I saw the potential for businesses to use them to build revenue so that's what I did I started doing it myself and I saw traction there therefore I was able to start offering those services to other companies and so now me personally I can offer a wide range of services that I'm known for but now as an owner of the agency I actually hire people to do those services and obviously the goal with that is to hire an entire team so then I can focus on our business's growth and bringing in more clients and revenue. So then my team can actually make more money so we can just continue building and growing together. But for you, I would say the biggest thing to make more money as a freelancer is learn other skill sets that complement your current skill set. Web development, understand SEO, email marketing, digital marketing, ads are a big one. And any sort of social media that you can plug into their website, whether it's Facebook Pixel, Pinterest tracking, anything like that that can really up their website, up their marketing presence on Google, you can charge more as a freelancer. <sighs> All right, sorry I had to put you down so I could actually get some work done. All right, so the first thing that we went over was becoming a Jill or a Jack of all trades, which is finding that complementary skill for your main skill that you have. Whatever service that you offer, it's web development, SEO, marketing, whatever. If it's social media, videography, product shots, video editing all that type of stuff. Like there's so many complimentary skills that you can offer clients, A, to keep them on a retainer contract and so you can charge more and make more money as a freelancer. And also, if you already have that trust with somebody, you already are ingrained in their business, they're more likely gonna wanna work with you because they already have been working with you, so why not offer those skills? There are so many free online learning platforms that teach 
all of those skills out there. So hone in on the ones that you really wanna get good at and then start selling. The next thing that I wanna get into is going after big whales. I classify a whale if they are gonna pay me anywhere above six grand a month for non full-time work. What does that mean? So if you are able to land a big client and these are usually a bigger, well-known established company and they're gonna pay you six grand or more a month but you are not working 40 hours a week for them. Or if you are working 40 hours a week for them, and I do it like this because you're maybe you're able to automate or offload a lot of that work for somebody. That is considered a whale of a client. When I first started freelancing, my first few months I landed a whale and they paid me crazy amount of money to do anywhere from 10 to 20 hours of work a week. And that was awesome. But finding a whale is hard to do and keeping a whale is hard to do because oftentimes what I have found is if you find a whale, they're kind of like a one-off or they need you just for a particular project that's only gonna last so many months. For that particular one, I think the project lasted seven months until they were able to find somebody and hire an in-person team for that. That they didn't actually want to always outsource the work. They wanted somebody in office. Therefore, that contract ended when they hired their forever employee. The other aspect of that is if you find that client that pays you a lot of money, but then you are able to trust and hire somebody to offload some of that work to, obviously paying them to do it, that would be also considered a whale, even if you're giving away some of that money to a contractor or somebody that you actually hire onto your team. One of the best ways that I have found whales is I really just go on websites of companies that I know and I check to see what they're hiring for. If you are extremely gifted in what it is that you do and the service that you provide and you're able to get a meeting with these people and close the deal, a contract like that is really big and it could set you up for a good lump sum of money in your account. And Another place to find that is, and I've told this hundreds of times, but it's crunchbase.com. They literally have lists of companies that have recently just gotten funding. If you find a company that has recently just gotten funding, that means they have money. So make sure you have your portfolio ready to go. You have examples of work that you've done. You have videos on your site where you talk through different projects and the solutions that you found. Make sure you have up-to-date social media. These things are so key because you never know who's looking at your content or if you send an email to somebody, nine times out of 10 is they are gonna check to see who the heck you are. Make sure you have your website in your signature on your Gmail. Those things are essential when you're reaching out to those types of things because whales are hard to land, but if you do land one, that can be extremely promising for your future as a freelancer because A, it gives you a confidence boost. That's huge. Confidence is key in this particular industry because you as a freelancer, you're not just providing the service, you're also doing the sales and marketing of yourself and of your business. So having that confidence boost where a company is trusting you with their work it's a big one. And I know for me, landing a big name company that was paying me really good money was huge in the early days for my confidence. It gave me the knowledge and the confidence in my abilities that I knew that people could trust me to provide solutions for their businesses. So those are the two main things if you are trying to A, become a Jill or Jack of all trades, which I recommend you do as a freelancer. If not you, hire people that can do that stuff. Hiring people has been the greatest asset to my life for everything, for my business and also my personal life. Having somebody that I trust that I can offload work to and also pay them to do it provides value to my business and it provides value to them as a freelancer because providing value to somebody else as a freelancer, it's just gonna grow your business and hopefully theirs as well. And maybe potentially you can hire them full time to work for you. Becoming a Jill of all trades, master what it is that you do, but then get those complimentary skills. It'll change your freelance revenue. Trust me when I say this, I've been freelancing for many, many years, been able to provide for myself and my husband, and it's been an amazing opportunity, something that I didn't even know that I wanted to do. And I didn't even know it was possible until I literally just started doing it. And I'm like, okay, this is actually really fun. I'm able to 
work with clients that I like, work on projects that I'm interested in, and then provide the services that I actually want to provide for people. And then the services that I don't necessarily want to provide, I'm able to hire for that. So think big, think bigger when you think of yourself as a freelancer. Think of all the opportunities and think of the whole picture when you're offering services to clients. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, once again, give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't find a value. And if you didn't find a value, let me know why. And of course, if you did or if you have a topic that you want me to talk about, of course, let me know in the comments. I love getting feedback. I also have a Discord and a Slack group where I take requests for videos as well. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me.